Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to part two in determining whether or not a number is a prime number by writing a C++ program. So in the last video we basically took care of the first condition. We wanted to check to see if our number is uh, actually two or greater and if it's not two or greater then our program catches that and then it says okay the number that you entered is not prime basically. So that's what it's going to do there. So if, uh, if the number is uh, not less than two, then that means it's either equal to or greater than two. So we're gonna do some more logic here to determine whether or not this number is indeed prime. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to, I guess what we probably should do is up above here, we're gonna create a variable, and this is going to be a Boolean variable. So the way we do that in C++ is we type in the word bool, and then we just give it a name, and we're gonna name our Boolean variable prime, and we're gonna give it a value of true. So basically what we're saying here is we're saying as soon as we use this function, we're gonna test to see if some number is prime and immediately we're just going to, we're going to assume that it is prime and this value may change later on in the code if we can prove that it's not. So right now we assume that the number that we pass in is prime and if it's not prime, we'll catch it in this else statement and then we'll set prime to false. So a boolean basically means that that's the type of variable that prime is and boolean can hold a true or false value. So prime is basically a variable that can hold either true or false. So right now we're just assuming that our number is prime and uh, we're gonna do some code here to test whether that's the case and we can actually change that value if we determine that it's not prime in this else statement. So what we're gonna do in this else statement is we're gonna write a for loop. So the first thing in our for loop is we need to create a new integer variable, and we're just gonna name that i, and we're gonna set it equal to two at the beginning. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check to make sure that i is holding a value that is less than or equal to the square root of our number. And then what we're gonna do at the very end of this loop is we're going to add one to whatever value is an i. So if this is the first time you've ever seen a for loop, uh, you probably need an explanation. So basically what's gonna happen here in this for loop is this is just a loop, so it's going to basically, I'm gonna write a bunch of code inside of these curly braces here. And every time this condition right here is satisfied, then we're going to execute the code inside this for loop. And at the very end, we're going to basically add one to whatever value is stored in the variable i. So basically, if, if our number is nine, we're gonna start where i equals two, and then it's gonna check to see if two is less than or equal to the square root of nine, and the square root of nine is three, so that would be true. And so therefore, we would uh, go ahead and process whatever code is in the for loop. And then at the very end, then, i equals two would change to i equals three because of this statement here, and we would process it one more time. We would say, okay, is three less than or equal to the square root of nine, and it's equal, so then it would go through this for loop one more time. i would increment to four, and at that time, four is not less than or equal to the square root of nine. So therefore, that last time, it would exit out of the for loop, and it would stop running the code inside these curly braces. So that's how the for loop works. So basically what we're gonna do in this for loop is we're just gonna check uh, to see if the second condition is met. So the second condition for a number to be prime is it can't produce a remainder of zero when divided by any number in between itself and the number one. So the way we do that is what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put an if statement in here. And we're gonna say if our number, and then we're gonna do a percent sign which is the modulus operator and we're gonna say percent i double equals zero. So what this is saying here is it's saying if our number, when we divide it by i, which i changes from two all the way up to the square root of whatever number we're looking at, so we take that num we take our number, we divide it by whatever i is, and i updates every time through the for loop, so we're gonna do this if statement quite a, quite a few times if we have a big number, and uh, if any of those produce a remainder of zero, is what this is saying, if any of those produce a remainder of zero, then we're gonna do whatever is inside this if statement here. And so if any of those produce a remainder of zero, then we're basically gonna say that prime is false. So we've detected 
that our number is not prime if it enters into this if loop here. or this, It's not an if loop, if statement. So if it enters the if statement, then uh, our number is actually not prime. So we assume it's prime unless we can prove otherwise that it's not. So basically now once we pass, uh, once we're finished with this for loop here, we either have a prime value of true still or we have a prime value of false because we've determined that our number isn't prime. So then we're just going to check to see which of those two cases we have. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say if prime double equals true. So that means if prime holds the same value as true, then what we're going to do is we're just going to print a message to the screen and we're just going to say that uh, basically whatever number we entered and then we're going to say is prime. And then this backslash n just sends us to the next line on the screen. So if prime is true by this point, then we know that we have a prime number. So we're going to say whatever number we entered is prime. So the other case, we're going to do an else statement here now. So this is if prime is not true is what this else statement. So this will be the case where prime is false. Then we're just going to do a see out statement. So we're going to print a message to the screen. And we're going to say that whatever number we entered, and then we're just going to say is not prime. And that should be all we need for the code. So let's go ahead and test this. So we've defined our is prime function here. So now what we're going to do is in our main program, we're just going to type uh, is prime, and we're going to pass in a number. So let's see. We know that the number seven is prime. So let's go ahead and run the program and see if our program recognizes that seven is prime now. So we get a message here and it says seven is prime. So that seemed to work really well. So let's try eight. Eight is not prime. So let's make sure our program recognizes that. So let's go ahead and run the program now with a value of eight in there. And we'll see if eight is prime. And it says eight is not prime. So what we can do here is we can just kind of copy and paste this. So let's just go ahead and copy this a few times and uh, paste it. We'll just do a few of these all in a row here. <clears throat> so starting with, I don't know, we can start with the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, I guess, okay. And then we'll run the program and it will print out a list of all those numbers and tell us whether or not those numbers are prime. So it says two is prime, three is prime, four is not prime, five is prime, six is not prime, and seven is prime. So it looks like everything is working correctly there. So I guess what we can do is we can try some more numbers. So I know that 101 is prime, that would be a hard one to kind of figure out by hand. So let's go ahead and uh, run the code for that case and make sure that that works. That should be a prime number. Yep, and it says 101 is prime. So that worked. We could try one more uh, just uh, for good measure. So 102, um, that's not prime. So let's just go ahead and run that real quick and just test that as a final case here. And we get a message and it says 102 is not prime. So there you go. That's uh, basically how you can write a computer program in C++ to determine whether or not a number is a prime number. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this was kind of different if you're used to just watching my math channel. And uh, But anyway, I think you guys will probably find this interesting. So tell me what you think about this in the comments. Uh, I might add some more to this playlist, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, you guys have an excellent day, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.